thank you for everyone joining us here today for our webinar on five cool features for plant and facilities engineering with Autodesk Vault. And uh, I think it's probably going to be about a 30 minute webinar. Um, haven't done a dry run and timed it, but I'm thinking that that's about where we'll, uh, where we'll hit time wise. And just a quick background on us, Hegerman and Company, who are presenting today. We've been around since 1984, so getting to be about 27 years now. Uh, we have offices all over and covering the United States, uh, plus we do a lot of international projects as well. We've been doing data management uh, projects uh, with products like Autodesk Vault for over 24 years now, well over 1,200 successful customer projects. So we've got a wealth of experience in what we do. Probably most of you are familiar with Vault, but just a quick slide here on the different levels. Um, Vault Basic, Vault Workgroup, and Vault Professional are the three levels of Vault, and everything you see here is included with Vault Professional, which is um, by far the the most widely used Vault platform. Uh, most of the features are in Vault Workgroup. And then Vault Basic is really just a CAD user check-in, check-out tool. So what you're seeing here today, uh, for the most part, uh, does not apply to Vault Basic. Um, but when we get to the Q&A session, you can uh, ask specifics on that if you have one of these levels uh, other than Vault Professional as far as, you know, did, does this feature work with Vault Basic? So feel free to ask that in the Q&A when we wrap up. <clears throat> and a little more background on Vault for those of you who aren't familiar. Vault is far and away the most widely used CAD document, top document management software in the world. It's used across all industries and applications. You know, most of you are familiar with Autodesk, you know, one of the largest and most successful software companies in the world. Um, available in lots of languages with staff and partners all around the world to help you. Uh, so 24-7 global support is available. Um, and mentioned earlier, Vault works in a bunch of languages and it's uh, really the most scalable CAD document management platform in terms of number of users, number of documents, number of sites, being able to use it internationally. Um, with a, where you've got, you know, maybe low bandwidth, high latency connections between international sites, Vault works we very well in that environment. <clears throat> then within plant and facilities engineering, kind of some of the key needs we've seen identified, you know, just obviously, you know, general document management, which Vault provides excellent integration with CAD, files and CAD software, because uh, obviously you've got plant and equipment and facilities and drawings you need to work with, done in a variety of different uh, CAD tools. And then, you know, especially in the plant environment, uh, things run 24 seven. So two o'clock Sunday morning, a maintenance or an operations person needs the ability to find a drawing or a manual to get their work done. So having an easy 24-7 search view print interface is very important. Um, also, we won't be hitting on this as much today, um, but support for engineering projects where masters or as builds can be assigned to one or more capital projects where the, the working copies for the projects are kept there away from the current masters or as built um, may need to have the same drawing or document assigned to multiple, multiple overlapping projects, and then uh, collaboration with outside parties, where a lot of times uh, plan and facilities design and engineering work is done by outside architects, engineers, uh, contractors, so need an ability to collaborate with those outside parties. So those are some of the key needs we see customers in plant and facilities engineering have with the document management system. And with Autodesk Vault, you can support all of those needs. 
then getting into some of the things we, you know, specifically were advertised and we want to show here today um, that are features of Vault that maybe not everyone knows about, uh, which can be key in this industry and in this in your industry. Um, the ability to have automatic and custom property pages using the Vault data standard. So for every drawing and document. It can have custom properties assigned to it, like location, building, floor, area, discipline, vendor, project. So you can click on any document, see that document's information for those particular properties, then be able to edit the property, search on those properties. <clears throat> and then tying into that, there's a feature in Vault, which can be kind of hidden, um, called the Query Builder which within the uh, Vault Explorer client allows a real nice forms-based search interface. So we'll be demonstrating that. Uh, also, in the newer versions of Vault, there is now automatic PDF publishing built in. You know, Vault has always had automatic DWF publishing. Well, there is also now automatic PDF publishing of AutoCAD and Inventor files, which we'll take a look at that. <clears throat> and then another big thing for plant and facilities engineering is the ability to generate document transmittals then to go out to your external parties that you need to work with. And again, there's three features here in Vault which work together to give Vault some really nice transmittals capabilities which again, a lot of people may not know about, and that's the uh, project links, pack and go, and a uh, function of where used, which a lot of people don't know about. And then finally, for cl cloud-based collaboration on engineering and architecture and construction projects, Autodesk has their BIM 360 Docs platform, now known as Autodesk Docs, and that's a specific product for that separate from Vault. However, the newer versions of Vault offer bi-directional integration and synchronization with BIM 360 Docs. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. And then a couple of bonus uh, cool Hagerman connection tools for plant and facilities engineering that we'll hit on as well, um, which are our Hagerman project connection. Uh, which is specifically designed for managing files for capital projects and keeping things in sync between your as-built or master files and your project copies, allowing for concurrent engineering, that kind of thing. And then Hagerman QVP Connection is an alternative to the Vault web client, which provides a simple, easy to use, low cost, forms-based search user interface. So getting more into these, uh, Vault Data Standard is something that is automatically included with newer versions of Vault. And it works with Vault Workgroup, Vault Professional, and then the Vault Office Client, uh, which can be used with Workgroup and Professional. And then it will work inside of uh, your Vault Explorer Client and also inside of AutoCAD and Inventor. And it allows for the configuration of new document wizards, uh, templates, property pages, um, and then you know with that helps enforce you know standardization and automation. So a couple of screenshots. So with data standard installed and some configuration done, when you create a new file, then you can get a wizard that asks you for information about that particular file, such as you know, in this case, it's showing what you can pick the category, uh, you can pick the document type, you can pick the template you want to use, you can pick the numbering scheme to automatically name a number of the file, and then, you know, prompt and fill in for title, um, manually fill in the file name, or you can do it automatically. So based on how you've set up your, your document type or your document category and the associated properties, this wizard and then the data sheet or property page associated with each file will be automatically configured. 
So just by having the data standard installed on your computer and then setting up your document, vault document categories and properties, you get this automatically. Beyond that, with more customization, you can configure these property pages to look however you want, but that, that takes more advanced configuration. Uh, so then if we take a look at that in Vault, and I got a ton of stuff open here. Yeah, so if we go into this Vault, and I've, I've created a Vault here called Facilities, and you can see I've kind of got um, my master files organized by building or area. And then if I go into uh, this particular building, go to this drawing, <clears throat> you can see an example of the data sheet for this facilities drawing category that Vault Data Standard has created for me automatically. So I said, you know, for this facility drawing, I want to have a title, be able to assign it to a project, a location or area, a discipline, a vendor, equipment type, and equipment number. So I did my standard Vault configuration, set the category with the properties, and Vault Data Standard automatically gives me my data sheet for data card for each file. And you can also see up here, I've configured my uh, column headings in Vault. So for each file, it's you know, giving me a grid of that information. And then if I wanted to edit any of these properties with Vault Data Standard, I can just say Edit File Data Sheet, and it comes up. And you can see some of these properties, I've made them type in, and then others I've set up lookup lists so my properties can be entered via lookup lists. And then also, should I wish to create a new file, I can say create new standard file, and then I can pick my document category out of the ones that I've configured in my vault, the facility drawing, and this is gonna be an AutoCAD drawing. I can then pick my AutoCAD template. I can pick my numbering scheme for facility drawing. I can say this goes to the main office, and then it'll automatically, so if I went ahead and completed this, it would make this file name mo 0012, because that would be my next number. And then I've got all my other properties that I can fill in over here. And then when I hit OK, it'll automatically create the file from the template, fill in those properties. And then if I have these properties linked to attributes in that template, that'll automatically be filled out. So that's kind of a quick thing on the data standard. Um, one more thing I'm gonna show here kind of quickly, wasn't really mentioned, but I'm gonna say, show me all my drawings, asterisk.dwg. And you can see here, there's my results. That's every drawing and published PDF that I've got. And then I can see my column headings. I don't know if anybody's ever seen these little filters here, but I can say, I can click the little filter and say, only show me electrical files. And then I can say, only show me ones from GE. And then I can say, only show me ones for this project. So you can use your column headings and these filters to also do searching. But the thing I wanted to show you here next was our query builder. And I don't know if anybody who has Vault has noticed these little down arrows before. Some people know about it, some don't. Expand the query builder. And this brings down a configurable drop down form so you can do users can do forms based searching. Um, so you can see here, 
each user can have the properties on here that they most commonly search by. And you can see, you can switch that if you wish and pick any other system or custom property you want to search on. Um, I can remove it or I can add more search fields here. Now, so I can say, and then this, my location or area, I set that up in Vault as a lookup list. So then the query builder picks up those lookup lists and I can say, only show me for files for building 101. There's all those files. And then I can say, only for, filter it on down to piping. And then you know, filter it on down to Acme as my vendor. So you can see in a plant and facilities environment, that's a pretty handy, um, handy thing to have. And then if you hit the up arrows, that'll collapse the query builder. So you can always expand it, collapse it as you need to use it. And in fact, here's the slide that I had on it. <clears throat> now, an alternative, um, I won't be showing the Vault web client. Uh, Autodesk, especially with the Vault 2022, um, they've redone the Vault web client, uh, which is a really nice interface. One thing that it hasn't had um, very well is uh, a for forms-based searching. So a lot of our plant and facilities customers substitute their Vault um, installation with our Hagerman QVP connection software, which QVP stands for Query View and Print. So if we show that quickly here, here it is. It runs in a web browser, and you can have as many different uh, configurations as you want for different forms. So this is working with that same facilities vault that I was just showing. So in QVP, I've configured a forms-based search here. So again, I can kind of do the same thing. I can say building 101, search, uh, discipline, filter on down to electrical. I can filter on down to vendor ABB, and then if I want to view it, just click the glasses, and it will open it up. And by default, oh, actually, okay, I had a PDF here. Um, by default, the way our QVP works is that, you know, this is a .autocad DWG file. By default, if there's a viewable, of the file, a DWF or a PDF. Uh, for viewing purposes, QVP automatically pulls up the related DWF or PDF. And then QVP launches the file you've selected for viewing um, into whatever viewing software the user has on their computer, whether it's you know Adobe Acrobat Reader, Autodesk Design Review, DWG TrueView, et cetera. Automatic PDF publishing is another biggie. Like we, like I mentioned, um, Vault has always had DWF publishing. Some customers and companies have a preference for PDF publishing, either instead of or in addition to DWF publishing. So now in the newer versions of Vault, in the uh, administration and setup, you can um, enable automatic PDF publishing and then configure how you wish to do it. <clears throat> and so if I go to here, you can see configure PDF publish options. There are separate configurations for AutoCAD and Inventor. And then um, have various settings to add as an attachment. So it'll actually attachment link the PDF. So it'll link the PDF to the DWG so they're tied together. 
um, upload the source file location. So in this case, it's going to put the PDF in the same folder as the native file, or you can put your PDFs into a different folder in Vault. And then there's other settings here about uh, synchronizing the lifecycle state and revision letter number between the PDF and the DWG. Uh, do you want to do model space? Do you want model space published? Do you want the layouts published? Uh, do you want to include layer info? Stuff with font. So a number of configuration settings. And these are the configuration settings um, in general and configuring, in this case, how it's going to be published back into Vault. You can also specify PDF publish location and, if you wish, instead or in addition to, have the PDFs published to a location outside of your Vault. And then also you've got to switch to enable manual PDF creation. So a user can just say create PDF whenever they want. If that's turned off, then your PDF publishing would happen on lifecycle state transition. So here I'm editing this lifecycle workflow called basic release process. I've gone my work in progress and I'm configuring my transition from work in progress to released. And then job types, so you can create an automated job for PDF publishing. So whenever a file transitions from work in progress to released, this custom job automatically kicks off and does the PDF publishing for you. So nobody has to remember or forget to do it. And then if we take a look at that in our vault, so I can go to building 101 and you can see um, these files have PDFs generated. So here's my DWG, here's the PDF that's been generated. Uh, so we can view it. And then if I go to the DWG and go to uses, you can see there's actually an attachment link between the DWG and the PDF. So if you send out or create a transmittal that's got the DW, you want to send the DWG out on a transmittal, it can then automatically grab the PDF to go with it too. So actions that offer um, pertinent specific actions on the DWG will automatically bring its DWF with it um, if needed. So that's real handy as well. And then you know, if I want to create PDFs manually, it's just create PDF and whatever files you have selected will generate the PDF upon command or like I showed, it can be done under um, automatically with a lifecycle workflow transition. <clears throat> then maybe an um, even more unknown capability is the transmittal capabilities that are built into Vault using the pack and go and some other features. So you can see here, um, and we'll, we'll see this in a, demo, in a demonstration here in a little bit, I've got uh, my files organized for projects. So I've got project documents, project year, customer, project number. And then within my project, um, I've got an outgoing transmittals folder with different transmittal packages to go out to you know, different uh, recipients. So I've clicked on this particular transmittal number. I can see my main transmittal document. Uh, that I've created and pertinent information on it and the files I want to send out. And then I picked my transmittal document and did a pack and go. And then the pack and go automatically grabs all of the drawings in the transmittal folder and all of their PDFs. And um, I can pick my transmittal report document 
And kind of if we go take a look at that, yeah. So here's here's that vault that I was in. So here you can see here's my project, and here's the here's the files that are part of this project. So not a big not a big project, not a whole lot of files, but here's the files we're working on for this particular project. And we can have other subfolders to you know, divide the files up if it's a big project. And then I've got an outgoing transmittals folder with some transmittals. And so if I want to uh, create another transmittal, I can say create a new transmittal folder. Using my transmittal numbering scheme. And then I can also set up um, automatic numbering for the creation of new transmittal folders based on the, the project and the next number. And then I've got my uh, main transmittal document that I have created. And you can see with my vault data standard, I've configured some properties here. Uh, so uh, who the client contact is, when the transmittals do back, why is it going out, how was it sent, um, and if I you know duplicate that again, it's I can say create a transmittal form, an office template. There's my transmittal form template, and then you can see it asks me. Or all of these properties. Now, the next thing I want to show is the project links capability, which really works nicely with transmittal. So, here's all of the documents <clears throat> that we've got in this project. And so, to go out on this transmittal, I need to gather the one that I want to go to out on this transmittal. What I can do, so I can, and I can, so I can say, I want to take all of these. So I want to send all of these files out on this transmittal. If I just select the file, hold down the alternate key on my keyboard, which you can't see, and then drag them from my main, from where the files really are, to this transmittal folder. And notice it says create link in folder name. I'll do that. And then you know I can continually go back. You know, maybe I want to grab this file too. I'll go back. Oh, we missed this file. I got to go back, grab it too, and assign it to the transmittal. These are not actually the so in my transmittal folder, these are not actually the files. These are just links to the original file. So you can see most of these same files I've sent out on all of the transmittals for this project. But all these file listings you're seeing here are really just links back to the actual native files. And then I can go to any file in my project, go to where used, and I can see all of the transmittals that this particular file has gone out on. And that, you do need to go to filter and have folders turned on. So that'll show me all of my folder project links. Uh, so then going back to here, <clears throat> um, I can if I want, this, is, this step isn't necessary, but I can, That's not what I wanted to do. Hey, bear with me. Hang on a second. I can attach, and you don't have to do this step. But now I've linked my main transmittal document to the drawing. So now when I say pack and go, you can say just by saying pack and go on my 
uh, transmittal document, it automatically grabbed all of the drawings linked to it, grabbed all of the PDF linked, created from and linked to the drawings. It would also grab any XREF children or anything like that. And then how do I want to send out this transmittal? You know, I can send the, I can zip everything up into one package or I can send the files unzipped. Where do I want to send them? And I can just send this to a folder on my computer or server. I can directly email them out from here. I can sync them to the Autodesk BIM 360 collaboration portal directly from here or the Autodesk Fusion 360 or SharePoint. <clears throat> I'm just going to save it to a destination folder. And then, you know, you can just put all the files into a single folder hierarchy, either separately or within the zip, or maintain the folder hierarchy. I'm just going to put it in my junk folder. So you can see it automatically creates a zip transmittal with the correct name and number based on the, the transmittal number. And then there is that transmittal I just created. So you can see it zipped up all of the files and then also created my transmittal report listing all of the files included in the transmittal and the pertinent information. And this report form is totally customizable as to how you want it. The next thing, and again, you saw in there how I could have um, sent my transmittal directly to BIM 360 docs um, and sent it to a specific linked project on BIM 360 docs. Um, so here, so looking at this, you know, here's my, here's my vault system and we've got firewall around here. So, you know, these are all our internal people who are using and interacting with Autodesk vault like you've seen here. But then we've got these outside parties that we need to collaborate with, which could be your outside consultants, engineering service providers, contractors, clients, and so on. And with this, and again, the BIM 360 docs can work standalone, or here where it's showing is that Vault and BIM 360 docs can synchronize between one another you know, to bring your outside parties and your internal people into one synchronized environment. And, um, you know, going into a whole BIM 360 docs uh, demonstration, it, it, that's a whole thing uh, in and of itself. So if you are interested, there are videos out there um, on the Autodesk BIM 360 docs. And then if we go back to Vault, and go into Tools and Administration, within Vault, we can see the configuration of that. So you can set up a mapping between a project folder or just folder in general in Vault with a BIM 360 project. So here you can see I've got a, a name, and this is whatever name you want to give it, between this particular link, between this folder in Vault, and you see that's the one we're looking at earlier, the, the 21-00001, and this particular project folder in BIM 360 doc. So for each project you got involved, you would link it to a BIM 360 doc project. And then only 
the right outside people that are working on that project would have access to that project in BIM 360. Uh, so it'd be like a one-to-one -one mapping between project folders and vault, projects in BIM 360. Um, and then you can also down here uh, set up a sync job where you can you can make it so that um, users can manually sync files to vault or the synchronization only runs at a certain time every day or every so many hours. So in this case, um, Vault and BIM 360 docs will just automatically synchronize between one another. And then with a manual sync, you can just select the files and upload to BIM 360 docs. And then in BIM 360 docs, there is a send to vault capability. So if a contractor makes changes in files you've uploaded to BIM 360, they upload their changes, they can then sync them down into the project folder in vault uh, using that same mapping for you then to review and approve or reject. And then the last thing I did want to talk about is our Hagerman project connection. And project connection is designed um, for the separation of as-built from project copies for capital projects. So then your at masters are as-built and your project copies are in separate folder structures with different access rights for different people. And then you can actually have multiple simultaneous project copies associated with the same as built if you have overlapping projects. And then Project Connection manages all of the links between the as built and the project copies. And then when a project is complete, it would then automatically update the appropriate as built for you and bump the res. And you can see our Project Connection works right inside of Vault with our project connection commands. Um, so a workflow with project connection would be, you know, you've got all your maintenance and operations personnel um, viewing the released files here in your as-built folder area in Vault. Then within the same Vault in a different folder area, you can have your projects area. And then um, an authorized person can assign an existing as builder master to a project and create a linked copy of that master in the project area. And from there, you know, people who are creating and editing the files would have access and it would go through its changes, reviews, approvals, and so on. And then when the new construction is complete, the new as build is created, they can simply say update parent copy, and then that new as built becomes available as Rev B for all of these people. But all the stuff that's going on over here, they your maintenance staff doesn't have access to it. And then this also ties in very well with BIM 360 docs. So you can have an as-build area in Vault, assign an existing as-build or master to a project area in Vault, and from, then from there, send it out to BIM 360 for your external parties to access. So just to kind of summarize uh, what we've seen here, um, and we've talked about the automatic and custom property pages with Vault Data Standard. Uh, we've sh shown the uh, custom search UI available in Vault Explorer using Query Builder. Uh, we've taken a look at the automatic PDF publishing now available in Vault. Uh, we've taken a look at the set of commands within Vault for doing transmittals, including project links, pack and go, where used. 
And then we've talked about integrating with Vim 360 docs. And we've also touched on our Hagerman project connection and QVP connection, which are additional tools available for vault users within the plant and facilities environment. So that concludes what I had down to show here. Um, so at this point, we can open it up for questions. Like we've got one, a couple questions here so far. And so will the uh, question, will the URL for published documents always be the same when the native file is modified? Um, Yes, because when the published file is updated, it's overwriting the same file again. So the, the link and location would stay the same. <clears throat> and then can PDF, another question, uh, can PDF publishing at any time be turned on and off for different folders? Um, I don't believe so as that is a global setting. There may be something, I'd have to go in and look in um, the security privileges to see, there might be a way to do it with security. I'd have to follow up on that one. But generally the, the setting is global. There might be a way to do it with uh, uh, roles and privileges. And then can watermark be included on the PDF? Um, I don't believe so, but let me check on that too. So I'm going to make a couple of notes here with those questions and your name, and I will follow up on those PDF questions. Um, any other questions? And while we're waiting, actually, you can go through your wrap-up information. Um, while we Thanks. wait, if any additional questions come in. Sure. <clears throat> well, thank you for the presentation. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us, too. Um, as we uh, conclude, we um, I'll just let you know that you have, if you have additional questions later on, you can simply reply to that confirmation or reminder email that you receive from GoToWebinar. We can get those um, to Matt or the appropriate person to answer. Um, once again, a short survey will pop up as we close down today. It is helpful to us if you answer that those questions. It um, should be four questions. Um, also, look for an email tomorrow, which will contain a link for the recording of today's presentation. Uh, we see nothing else has popped in, so I think we'll close down today. Um, but thanks, everyone, for attending, and have a great day. Thanks, everyone.